Hi, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us for our second webinar for Giving 28. Um, this is all about campaign strategy and telling your story. Uh, we're going to give it a minute so that more people can join us. Um, if you are here, we'd love to have you type into the chat your name and what organization you're representing today. Um, and we'll get started in a minute. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. I love seeing all of the organizations coming through. Um, alrighty, so we have more people joining us, but I'm going to go ahead and get started so we can make sure we can get through all of our content. Um, if you have questions during the presentation, go ahead and send them through the Q&A on your dashboard. Um, we will get through them most likely at the end. Um, we'll have like a Q&A session, uh, but if I see some as I'm talking, I'm happy to try and get to those as well. Uh, already, so we'll get started. Um, so again, welcome. Thank you for taking time to join us for our second webinar. Uh, we're super excited for Give 28 this year. Uh, we have just a ton of orgs registered, a lot of good prizes. Um, we'll chat through some of those later. Uh, but to start with, my name is Sarah, and I am the project manager for Give 28 through Mighty Cons. And we are the platform provider for Give 28. Um, and then we also have uh, our hosts, uh, Young Black and Giving Back Institute, um, Ebony, Johnson Cooper, and Nema. Uh, so we are, I don't know if they're on, I don't think they've joined us quite yet. So if they do, I'm going to pass it over to them so they can say hello. Uh, but for now, we are going to go ahead and keep going. Um, all right, so our agenda today, uh, we have a lot of good slides. Um, I want to say, what is that? 10 or so slides about different campaign strategies for you as you prepare. Um, we'll have different kind of tips for you to tell your story, uh, to make sure your organization is filled, organization page is fully filled out so that when donors visit, they can get a good idea of what you're fundraising for. Uh, we'll talk about some different marketing channels, make sure you're fully aware of the toolkit and the materials available in there. Um, we'll also talk about uh, the benefits of pre-scheduling as much as you can before the giving day. Um, we'll walk you through different Mighty Cause uh, fundraising tools on the platform, and then we'll also talk specifically how you can make the ask to donors and supporters um, so that you can have, you know, the best giving day uh, yet. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have our Q&A, so go ahead and send any questions you have over. Um, Alrighty, so getting into campaign strategy and telling your story, the first thing you're going to want to do is really understand the ins and outs of Give 28, whether you're new or you're a returning participant. Um, you'll want to familiarize or re-familiarize yourself with the FAQs. Uh, you'll want to make sure you're registered. You must be registered in order to participate um, and take advantage of the giving event. Uh, the actual giving day is August 28th. It starts at 8 a.m. Eastern and it goes through midnight Eastern. Um, the early giving portion of the event starts in about, what is that, a week or so, a week and a half. Um, it starts August 21st at 8 a.m. Eastern as well. So that is when you can start receiving gifts um, that count towards the giving day totals. Um, registration, like I said, is required. If you are on this webinar and you have not registered, make sure that that's the first thing you do. Um, Afterwards, you'll want to make sure that you have filled out the eligibility form if you're brand new or if the last time you participated was uh, over two years ago. If you have participated last year and then or the year before, then you can go ahead and you can fill out the registration so long as you still meet the terms of participation which are included on the registration page. 
So read through the rules, read through the FAQs, uh, make sure you, you know, if you have any questions, you can send them over to uh, YBGB or you can send them over to our Mighty Cause support team. Um, we're happy to help you out with any questions. Uh, and then you'll want to start to understand and take advantage of the prizes available. Um, and those prizes are going to be added to the site very soon. Um, so you can, we'll let you know when those get added. Um, all right, so a couple of different prize uh, opportunities available. I am actually, let's see if, Ebony, you've joined us. Do you want to uh, go over the prize opportunities? Yeah, hey everybody, I'm super excited to have you all on. Um, I can't start my video, but I am here. So um, good to see some names that we recognize. Um, hey y'all. So on this day, for those who have participated before, you know how this works. We um, are going to have the opportunity for cash prizes throughout the day. Um, those cash prizes are uh, available to you uh, at different times, different um, time blocks throughout the day as um, golden tickets. And then what's the other name, um, Sarah? Uh, power hours. Oh, power know. hours. That's it. That's what I was looking for. Power hours. And so, based on what um, cause area or uh, organizational support that your organization qualifies for, you will be able to win a cash prize. So, Ebony, what do you mean? I mean this. So, for all organizations based in DC, Maryland, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, Arlington, Alexandria, Fairfax County, right? So this is, um, these are the prizes that are attributed or associated with the Greater Washington Community Foundation. There are $2,000 worth of prizes. Um, soon there will be a timetable, so you know exactly, so I'm just hypothetically. Um, so let's say at um, the 9 a.m. hour, we say that whoever, so it's a power hour, the organization that falls it's either in any of these areas, DC, uh, these two counties in Maryland, or these three counties in Virginia, if you have the most donors within the 9 a.m. hour, then you will be randomly selected to win $250, right? Example. Then say at the noon hour, um, let's say you are an organization that works with um, Black women's reproductive and maternal health. At noon, we say um, we are going to do a um, golden ticket. Um, let's say the golden ticket is, uh, is that based on um, donors or can it be based on donors, Sarah? I just want to make sure that I'm getting the, the wording correct. Uh, yes, yeah, I may pull up the, um, the prizes that you said over. Okay. So let's just say at noon, we're looking for the organization um, that has um, raised the most money, right? So it can be raised the most money, it can be ha it can be has the most donors. Um, and then there is um, a specialty area that says um, that it'll randomly pick a donor. Doesn't matter what the donor is, but it'll just, or who the donor is, it'll just randomly pick the donor. Um, and so each of the amounts that you see here will be broken down into smaller, um, smaller amounts. Um, can you qualify for two uh, organ two um, leaderboards? Absolutely. If you are a uh, organization that services Black women um, with the um, with respect to uh, Black reproductive health and maternal health and you're located in DC, then you absolutely will fall on two leaderboards. And at any given hour, you can qualify for one or both of the prizes. The caveat is no one organization can win more than twice in one day. Even if you are um, on one leaderboard, you still can only win twice a day, um, just so that we can you know, spread the love. Um, if you are in Mecklenburg County, um, out in Charlotte, then there will be uh, 200, 250,000, there will be $2,500 worth of prizes allocated for those organizations. Again, if you serve um, Charlotte Mecklenburg and you also serve uh, Black reproductive and maternal health, then boom, you can qualify for both. So um, again, these numbers that you see here are the totals for each of the leaderboards and each of the partners who have um, invested uh, in the organizations that qualify for their either regional area or their cause base. Um, so make sure that if you see, let's say you are in St. Louis and you're like, hmm, 
I don't see my name on the St. Louis list. Uh, once the leaderboards get posted, please let us know. It just may have been an oversight, but we are pulling these organizations and you will qualify based on what you selected when you registered. So there are specific questions that we ask during registration. Are you based in Maryland? What counties are you in Maryland? Are you based in Charlotte? Um, do you, or do you serve um, Charlotte Mecklenburg? So we ask those questions uh, intentionally so that when we get started uh, putting together the leaderboards and qualifying people to win uh, these pots of money, all we have to do is just pull them based on your registration. If you did not answer the question correctly or you skipped the question and you don't see yourself in the leaderboard, that is why. Um, and so if you don't and you do qualify, if you're in St. Louis, again, you don't see your name. If you're in Charlotte Mecklenburg, don't see your name. Please let us know so that we will be able to, um, to, to fix it before the day begins. No, there is um, Sandra's question. Is there a leaderboard for those organizations based in cities not shown? No, there is not. So leaderboards um, are determined based on our partners, um, whether they are giving circle and giving circles um, like in GAP or whether they are community uh, foundations um, like Sarasota or St. Louis, um, the Greater Washington Community Foundation or nonprofits like the Do Good Institute. Um, if your city is not represented here, then that means you're just going to go on the larger general um, leaderboard. And that is the one that'll just be the Young Black and Giving Back um, leaderboard. Everybody's on that one. So um, you will find yourself on the main leaderboard. And we too will have, um, we will have some prizes available um, for folks in sort of the general population. Awesome. Um, just to be clear, if organization is outside of these highlighted areas, we can still participate. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can participate, um, Elizabeth. It just means that you won't qualify for these cash um, prizes throughout the day. Um, if you all are connected with any of your community foundations um, in your area, please encourage them. Um, we did um, we did our due diligence and reached out to some community foundations, particularly those in uh, communities that we see a number of nonprofits participating year after year. Um, but if the community foundation isn't able to participate, um, then we don't unfortunately have the funds to um, sort of, you know, break people down and say, oh, everyone in California or everyone in, you know, Texas, we just don't have it like that. But uh, we do encourage you, if you are in relationship with your community foundation, to tell them about the day and encourage them to become a supporter so that um, there will be cash prizes available for uh, folks in your region or your area. And more than half our demographic. Uh, listen, let me tell you something, Megan. We have tried with Atlanta. Uh, we will try again. Um, we will try again with Atlanta, but the, um, I believe it's the Greater Atlanta Community Foundation, no dice. So um, yes, please, Megan, uh, we did reach out to them. Uh, we would love to have Atlanta. Atlanta literally is our leading city. Um, well, Georgia, but Atlanta and the Greater Atlanta area for organizations that register and participate year after year. So we are super excited to see um, Georgia and Atlanta specifically represented, and we would love to have the Community Foundation um, uh, participate. Uh, so we would, you know, any connections you have, we're happy to take it and follow up with them for next year. Thank you, Megan. Any other questions about leaderboards and prize opportunities? All right, I'll toss it back over to you, Sarah. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, all righty, so we are gonna get into some strategy uh, and tips for filling out your profiles um, to really entice donors and let them know what you're all about. Um, so first thing really big is identifying your why. So this is basically, you know, your story, your mission. Uh, it's what you're fundraising for in particular, if you have a specific goal, if you have a specific need. Um, so answering that question, is your organization fundraising for a specific part of your mission? Or are you fundraising in general? Um, if yes, what are the funds you are raising trying to accomplish? Do you have, you know, specific programming that you need support with? Do you have, you know, building, uh, you're trying to, you know, make modifications or expand your building? Um, if not, you also want to be very specific in what you are, you know, putting those donations towards because donors, they want visibility into what their gifts are going to support. So even if you're not fundraising for something super specific, uh, letting them know that their funds are going to support, you know, these three overall goals or our overall mission 
uh, just, you know, writing a couple lines, being very specific is going to help a donor um, when they're, you know, trying to understand what their gift is going towards. Um, it'll also help them understand how much they might want to give if you're fundraising and you list out, you know, um, and we'll talk, we've talked a little bit about, you know, your custom checkout form and how you can add suggested donation levels. So if you uh, missed last webinar, then check that out in the recordings. Um, but this is another opportunity for you to just shed light specifically on what it takes to operate your organization. You'll want to definitely add as much info as you can uh, to your profile page um, and then also utilizing that custom tab. So you can see right here, uh, this particular organization also has a point program. Um, they do ballet and so they were fundraising in particular for ballet shoes. So that's a really good way to utilize both sections of your page to really tell your story, identify your why, who you are, what your mission is, you know, your overall kind of story. And then if you are happening to fundraise for a very specific need, you can add that to a custom tab. Um, another great example, you know, using imagery, and we'll talk more about this on another slide, uh, but breaking up the text. Sometimes text can be a little dense, so you're going to want to add pictures, testimonials, um, and just anything you can to really explain what you need uh, and who you are supporting. Um, next thing, setting at least one goal. Sometimes organizations join giving events and they don't specifically know, you know, how to best use it uh, to, you know, to their advantage. So Give828 is a really great opportunity for you to also work on things to improve your organization. Maybe you haven't, you know, done peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before. This is a great opportunity utilizing this event to try out peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Or maybe, you know, you have a goal um, and these can be monetary and non-monetary. I'm starting with the non-monetary goals, uh, but you might also want to, you know, get your board more involved in fundraising. Maybe that's a goal that you have, or maybe your goal is to get at least one matching grant for this year's campaign. Um, so using your SMART uh, kind of acronym, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound to try to figure out specifically what you want to do through your Give 28 campaign. Definitely having those monetary goals. Maybe you have a goal for you know a certain amount of dollars to go towards, uh, you know, your campaign, uh, or maybe you also have a certain amount of you know donors that you want to give, or a certain amount of donations you want to receive, uh, or even a new donor goal. Use this as an opportunity um, to set different smart goals for yourself. Um, this also helps you when you're looking at your campaign to try to figure out how you're tracking, um, you know, setting those milestone mini goals after you set your overall goals is really helpful as well. So maybe your overall goal as a monetary goal might be to get, you know, 50 donors during this year's campaign. Um, so, you know, setting mini goals, you know, by noon on the giving day, you need to reach at least half of that probably. So 25 uh, donors. Um, this also gives you talking materials, you know, setting mini goals and setting your overall goals gives you speaking points when you're sending emails, when you're updating your social media feeds. Hey, we've, you know, we're a fourth of the way to our overall goal. We're halfway there. It's noon. Uh, can you share our campaign with two of your friends or colleagues? So figuring out your overall goals, breaking them into smaller goals, that's going to be something you want to add as you're preparing for Give 28 um customizing and updating your page uh this is where you'll also want to probably maybe mention your goals so this particular example um you know they have their goals for their actual organization um and then they also explain you know this is our goal uh we need this much money to provide this much uh hours of support to this many mothers so adding as much information and detail as you can to your organization page is really really going to go far for donors who are trying to discover new organizations to donate to, um, or even just your core group of supporters who want to see what your goals are with this year's event. Um, something that's really fabulous about Give 28 is that you are available, you are able to fundraise outside of the giving day year round as well. Um, this is available to you once you're registered. Um, and our search bar allows donors who are visiting the page to sort by different missions. 
Um, so the more information you add to this page, the more people are going to be able to discover organizations that they may have not, you know, thought about before or known about before. So Give A28 is a really great opportunity um, to, you know, to reach new donors uh, who might be interested in donating to your mission. So like I said, this page is the main link that you're sharing with supporters. You'll add this link to your Facebook. You uh, can swap in this page link, um, and that's the URL at the top of your organization page. You can swap this into your Instagram bio. Um, wherever you are typically directing visitors, users, donors, you'll want to swap in these links because all donations need to come in through the Give 28 site for them to count towards the giving day, to count towards uh, prizes and such, um, and leaderboards. Um, so you can cut no, absolutely. Once you're done, we have two questions that are applicable to where you're, uh, what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, throw them at me. Where? What are you seeing? How will donors find you if it's not our own? That is a good question. Um, so our search bar, um, our search. Uh, if you go to Give Eight Twenty Eight, the website, and you go in the right hand corner, we have a search. Um, and if you go there, you can see kind of how it's formatted. We have a filter bar on the side. Um, and donors can sort by different organizations based on mission. Um, so that's a big one. Uh, Ebony, let me know, are you all doing anything as well? You mean to, to bring people to the site? Uh, highlighting different nonprofits. I think I saw something. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you are registered, um, every other week we have been highlighting um, organizations that have their profiles um, fully com uh, completed on the website. So if you are already part of our newsletter, we get them out. Our newsletter is like 3000 subscribers. So um, it is completely random. Um, so that's one way of helping to elevate some of the organizations. But if not, no worries. Um, we are in the point of our campaign and marketing now to uh, remind and inform prospective donors to go to the website. So people receive do donations in, in a number of ways, but two, two primary ways. One, you all as the uh, organizational leaders are sending emails, you're posting on social media, you're getting the information out. Now, mind you, we have toolkits on the website. So we kind of, not kind of, but we give you um, the blueprint to, to be able to, to do this and do this well um, from social media posts to um, email uh, drafts that, that we provided for you all. So from that perspective, you all are sending it to your existing donors. Um, you're sending it to your friends and your families so that they will know about the day. That's one way. The second way is um, through our own uh, promotion of the day on our various platforms, and particularly our, uh, our newsletter subscribers and letting them know and promoting and marketing. We you know, have paid advertisements, all that good stuff, right? So people kind of hear about it. But one of the best and most fun ways are people who don't who don't have any allegiance to any organization. I've heard about the day and they're like, oh my gosh, I wanna support. So that search box that Sarah was just mentioning in the top right-hand corner of the website is one way that people can find you. Um, they can find you based on your cause area. And that's something that you self-selected when you registered to say that you are arts and um, culture, that you are STEM, that you are education. So if I'm somebody that cares about STEM, when I um, select uh, through the search STEM organizations, I'm going to find all the organizations that are STEM oriented or STEM related. And then I get to pick who I want to donate to. Um, or sometimes during the day, there are folks who just um, hop on the website and their leaderboards. So some people are inclined to go all the way to the bottom to organizations that haven't gotten any donations during the day. They're like, I wanna get them on the leaderboard, right? So they may throw you a couple of dollars. And then there are people who are inclined to help organizations sort of get to the next space. Um, I'm not sure if Sydney is on here from iFly, um, but they do extremely well every year um, with Give 828. And largely they leverage their network that they have um, where they're able to fundraise. And so if I hop on the site and I see iFly, I'm like, hmm, what's that? Oh my gosh, they're doing so well. I just may gravitate towards that. So it really is um, what the proclivity is for the donor um, and how they're feeling when they land on the site, if they don't know anyone, um, or really it's also based on the work that you as an organization might do leading up to the day um, in marketing uh, to your donors, friends, family networks, et cetera. So I hope that that is helpful. Um, 
Mm, I'm so glad you asked that question, Ronnie. What does the platform do with our donors once the campaign is over? You have access to your donors and you alone. Um, Sarah, I, I don't know if it's in this webinar, but surely um, in the FAQ section on the website um, or the um, back end, you can always find all of your donors in your reports um, on Mighty Cause. So we don't have access to your donors. We don't touch them, but you are more than welcome once the day is over to download those donors and communicate with them because they are now your donors. We don't, we don't own them. Um, um, you're also doing that third webinar specific about donor that's um, right. retention. That's right, yep, we are. Um, so on Monday, we are, um, I am, hosting a webinar around donor retention. So I can add that um, to uh, how we can, how we'll show where people can get their, their donors from the website, Ronnie. Um, Sandra Washington, if you go to Give 828, you can sign up um, for our newsletter. It's right on the website. Um, we add organizations that have participated in the current year to our newsletter once Give 828 is over. So if you're not currently on our newsletter, once Give 828 is over, you will be added to, um, to our list. Um, you get an overwhelming number of emails um, from Mighty Cause and from, um, and from Tamir. So we, don't, we haven't added you all to our main newsletter yet. Uh, we want you all to be able to focus on, um, on your fundraising and getting your pages ready and all that good stuff. So we'll add you to the YBGB one after if you're not already on there. Awesome. We see Tamir is on. Um, Tamir, would you mind dropping in the link to that third webinar uh, into the chat for everybody? Are agencies responsible for marketing this to current donor base or will YBGB share potential donor data? Um, uh, so Megan, I, I hope I answered that. I'm going backwards. So um, I'll just uh, answer your question specifically. We do all that we can in the fairest way possible. So we don't... Um, you know, we don't have organizations, you know, submit to be featured or anything like that. Um, we promote the day and we, you know, we tell folks in our communication, hey, you'll have over 200 organizations to choose from in, you know, I think there are 11 um, cause areas that folks can select. So from, from that perspective, we do um, push, push forward um, a general nod about what you're doing, um, but we really leave it up to the organizations to figure out how they want to get their messages out. And I do hear you um, saying that you have a skinny donor base and that's okay, um, but you also have networks of friends, you have networks of family, you have a board, your board can send it out to their um, to their network. So if you don't have an existing donor base, that is okay, right? You can use this day and this opportunity to build your donor base um, and think of think of your donors, uh, even from prospective donors, as people who may not have given you a dollar yet, but they will, right? So what are you going to? What do you need to tell them and share with them about your work that's going to make them want to give to you? So what we're talking about today is what what folks will find on your page and they're like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is great. I love the work they're doing. I'm going to give, right? But that's only if I happen to land on the page. So we don't control who lands on your page, but you can control who lands on your page. So I encourage everybody to at least send out two emails, uh, whether it's existing donors or prospective donors, meaning friends, family, posting on your social media um, to let folks know that you're participating. You have a, a unique uh, URL, a unique uh, link that you can use that you can share that will take people right to your Mighty Cause page. So uh, again, the day is about celebrating all things about uh, grassroots Black uh, uh, nonprofits, but it's also um, an opportunity for, um, for the organizations to be able to you know, toot their own horns and get new donors. I hope that helps to answer these questions. Thanks, Tamir. Oh, and thank you for that testimony, Zainab. Yes, people that we serve showed up. Yes, so if you have volunteers, send it to your volunteers. Yes, send it to everybody you know. Have not checked the toolkits, so hoping you have graphics. Yes, please check the toolkits. There are graphics available, all of the things under resources. Um, the go live date for, e it's whatever you want, Sandra. You can start sending them out tomorrow. They've been available um, since June, but you don't, you can, you, you don't have to wait until the week of. In fact, we encourage that you start to let people know um, about the day now. Um, Georgia gives website platform looks similar. I assume this is 
I'm not sure, Megan. Um, no, she gives. They are what, also yeah. actually a partner of Mighty Cause, so their site will look similar. Um, they are a Giving Tuesday event. Um, just background. Um, okay, and one more question, and then we'll we'll hop back. Um, in what ways do I educate my executive director about the fundraising campaign for 828? Hey, Arnold, um, I would share with them the information. Um, I'd share with them the website, right? Um, let them know this is an opportunity for you all to fundraise um, in a new way and something that you may have not have done before. Crowdfunding is a different type of fundraising. So if you have an annual campaign or you all you know, are, are doing a capital campaign, crowdfunding is completely different, right? Crowdfunding is designed to um, to to have a, a short amount of time uh, and to galvanize as many people as possible. So this this fundraising effort is a crowdfunding effort. You have from eight a.m. until um, twelve p.m. twelve a eleven fifty nine to um, to get people to give. Uh, and so in order to get them prepared for that, the legwork starts well before then. Uh, and so Arnold, I would encourage you to share the website with your executive director, uh, share uh, the toolkits that are available for nonprofits um, to let them know like, hey, this is a great day, this is a great opportunity. Um, and if we're gonna be part of it, then we, we need to register before the 14th because registration does close on the 14th. And we actually have on the page right now, Arnold, what a powerful story looks like. So that is where Sarah will pick back up um, as she was sharing delighted to doula birth services. Awesome. Good questions coming through. Um, yep. So last thing on the side was just to let you know, once you do have, you know, goals, you can update your goal bar on your page as well. Uh, this means just right underneath, and I, it looks like it's cut off, but right underneath your donate uh, button, there's a goal bar. So you can say, you know, if you want to raise $27,000, you can note that in the goal bar. Um, and that will incrementally increase as the day goes on and you get more gifts. Um, if you do meet your goal, I always like to remind uh, organizations, if you meet your goal, fundraising doesn't need to stop. Increase your goal, use that as a talking point. Um, in your social media, in your, you know, your email, say, amazing job, we reached our first goal, we're so excited, can you help us get, you know, a thousand more dollars before the end of the day? Um, so just keep the momentum going. Um, all right, so moving into creating a compelling story. Uh, yes, sorry, more... really, really quickly, um, looks yeah. like someone at, came on late. Um, early giving starts on the 21st. Um, that's when people can start to give. And Sarah, is there editing help available? Does Mighty Cause provide editing support? Uh, Mighty Cause is happy to support in any way you need. So if you fill out your page and you want to send a quick note to Mighty Cause support and just say, hey, you know, can you check a take a look and just let me know, uh, they're happy to do that. Um, okay, so moving into creating a compelling story, this is a really great opportunity for you to, you know, use the voices um, and encourage people who are already a part of your organization or benefiting from your organization or even board members, letting them kind of also emphasize your why by writing their own, you know, uh, testimonial, so to speak. So you can identify a beneficiary of your mission, let them tell their story. Um, maybe these are, you know, a couple close people of your organization uh, who would feel comfortable, you know, writing a small paragraph or a couple lines about what you do that influences them. Um, because donors, this really resonates with them. They want to see people. They want to see stories. They want to be able to connect with you and your mission. Um, so identifying, you know, a couple people, a couple individuals to have, um, you know, add maybe these messages to emails, add them to your social stories, uh, or even add them to your organization page, maybe in that custom tab as well. Um, this is also going to help and emphasize your why, what you're fundraising for, informing your goals, letting them know, you know, these are the people we service and this is how it's impacting their lives. Um, and then once you have your goals, you have, um, you know, you've filled out your page, you're going to want to start to think about different marketing channels because that's what it's really going to come down to. People need to know that you're participating in Give 828. Um, and they need to know where to go and when to go there, uh, just like some of the questions that were coming through. Um, so again, early giving starts uh, August 21st at 8 a.m. So you're going to want to send out save the dates. You're going to want to post on your social media if you do that. Um, if you do 
you know, snail mail kind of mailers, um, traditional mail postcards, things like that, you'll want to send save the dates, especially letting your supporters know that you're taking advantage and participating in Gavate 28. Um, and then uh, just a couple different ideas here. Uh, but really meet your donors where they're at. So if you have a really strong social media presence, then focus your time and energy there. If you have, you know, a larger email database and you really only have a little bit of success with social media, don't worry so much about social media. Go where your donors are. Um, go where your supporters are. Um, and also take advantage of the people who are there with your organization to support you. So if you have a board, um, giving them the supplies and the tools where they can also promote your campaign is going to be really helpful. Um, I mean, getting ready for a giving day, it's a lot of work. So making sure you let people know in your organization circle how they can support you. Drafting emails for them um, as a jumping off point is really helpful. Um, you know, drafting social posts that they can then take and adjust so that it's a little more personal to them. Anything you can do to make it easy for somebody to promote your campaign is going to be really helpful. Um, this is essentially what YBGB has done in the nonprofit toolkit. They have, um, if you click into the toolkit, you'll see a PDF. You can click that and inside that is templated emails for you. So we have done a lot of work to draft up emails that you can then take and modify, drop in your mission statement, drop in anything to make it a little more customized for your, um, well, for what you need to say. But these are really great tools for you to try to lift um, some of the you know work off your shoulders um, so that you can hopefully have a very successful marketing campaign. Um, and then also make sure you take advantage of free design tools like Canva or QR code generators online. Canva, we always push this one because it's free. Um, they offer some, you know, of course, advanced features as well, but Canva has a lot of free tools available to you. You can, you know, draft postcards, you can draft emails, you can draft social media, Instagram, Facebook posts, that type of thing. Um, and pre-scheduling as much as you can. I know we're going to get into this, um, but that's my next slide. I, two slides later, I think, but pre-scheduling as much as you can. Canva makes it really easy for you to do this. Uh, Mighty Cause uses Canva all the time. I also want to mention QR codes because those are becoming more popular. If you print off flyers that you want to post on, you know, library message boards or, you know, wherever you want to post flyers, add a QR code to your organization page so that somebody can just scan that code with their phone um, and make a gift to you or even just head to your organization page to learn more about it. Um, and then here it is, pre-scheduling as much as you can. So write and pre-schedule your copy, uh, write and pre-schedule your social posts, write and pre-schedule your emails. Um, everything that you do in preparation is just going to make your life on the day of so much easier. You'll want to be in the moment trying to, you know, rally donors. You're not going to want to be trying to figure out how to draft an email. Um, so create all that content, you know, in the next two weeks. Um, so that you, all you have to do is click send, or all you have to do is click post um, to your socials, uh, write your donor letters, um, figure out, you know, which audiences need to have what. Do you have large donors? Those ones are going to need uh, a special email ask because they are recurring, maybe large gift givers. Um, if you have, you know, donors who give in smaller increments, that audience you are going to want to have a smaller ask for, or maybe, you know, an encouraging larger ask. So trying to figure out your messaging for each of the audiences that you have in your database is going to be really helpful, um, especially since getting an email that feels like it's tailored to you, you're going to get better feedback from that audience. Always keep it simple, uh, less text, adding imagery. People typically are receiving emails on their phones, checking socials, of course, on their phones. So they don't want to scroll through, you know, three or four paragraphs of text talking about who you are and your mission. You want to keep it super simple. Fundraising has started. Early giving has started. The live event is happening now. We're trying to win this power hour. Here's what we're doing. Here's how you can help. And here's the ask and the call to action. So your call to action is what you want them to do. Um, always add a button. Make it super simple. Click your button. Donate. Make your gift here. Um, and then I also put, you know, your call to action, maybe earlier on before you're asking for gifts, you're going to be sending those feelers out to your uh, supporters 
who might help you with peer to peer fundraising. Maybe you're sending out emails to your board members, telling them how they can help, adding a button that says, you know, click to access our Google, Google Drive filled with, uh, you know, email templates and stuff like that. Um, so kind of pre scheduling and pre writing as much as you can to make your day of just so much easier is going to be helpful. Um, and then Mighty Cause offers a bunch of wonderful fundraising tools for you to use. Um, oh, I had mentioned this earlier, but we have a customizable donation form. And this is where you can go in uh, and you can emphasize what it takes to make your organization operate. What does $40 do for your organization? What does $100 do for your organization? Adding those descriptions um, is going to help the donor, one, know what their gift is going kind of towards what it takes to operate. And also, this is a good way to entice donors to give more. Perhaps a donor was coming, you know, with $20 to give, but sees that, oh, $40 does this. That sounds really cool. I'm going to actually up my gift to 40 um, So adding at least, I would say, four to six different um, options as far as gifts is going to really help. This also drives your why. We're going to keep talking about your why because this, these gift amounts are going to help explain to donors specifically what it takes to operate, what it takes to you know have your mission be a success. Um, these fundraising tools over here are found under the fundraising tools and on your left side dashboard when you log into organization page. So we have widgets, which are really helpful if you have donors who are used to going somewhere else to donate throughout the year. This you can add a widget to your, you know, your regular year round homepage of your website. Um, and there's three, I think there's three different options available. This one right here is a mini donation form, which is my favorite. It's so cute. It follows that exact same kind of suggested donation level. Um, but this is really helpful if you are worried that donors might give to the wrong page during the Give 28 event, because like I said, you have to be making gifts through the Give 28 website for them to count towards your leaderboards and, and things like that. So dropping in a widget to your page, they can donate, and this donation widget will make sure that it still gets added to your organization page and still counts towards Give 28. Um, so check that out under fundraising tools. Uh, we also have wonderful peer-to-peer -peer fundraising opportunities. Um, if you're looking for a way to get your board involved, have them create individual fundraiser pages. This is a really great way to, you know, entry level into peer to peer fundraising. If you've never done this before, uh, have your board create a page. Basically, it's a donation page specific to them. They can tell their story. They have a donate button. They have a specific link that they share within their network. Um, and any gifts made to their fundraising page are going to automatically be added to your organization totals. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. And then uh, what else was I saying? Uh, matching grants tool. So matching grants, another great option if you're looking for a goal. Um, matching grants are going to help encourage donors to give at specific times um, or just entice them to give in general. Matches are going to typically be one to one. Um, so whatever gift someone makes, it'll be matched by the same amount. So if I give $20, I'm going to also be matched $20, thereby making my donation essentially $40. Um, so you can set up your match through the fundraising tools, matching grants tool. Um, and when you have a match that is live, very exciting, you'll have a little sticker attached to your donate button. Um, and organ donors will be able to also filter in that search that Ebony was talking about. They can filter specifically for organizations that have live matches. Um, just another way to get more visibility on your organization during the day of. Um, and then moving into making the ask. So this is going to be really important, uh, just figuring out how to frame your ask. So thinking about your audience, who you're talking to, um, your ask of a board member may be different from a volunteer. So thinking about that audience and what's going to resonate with them. Um, we always, you know, think about the psychology of asking someone to do something. You want to frame your ask, uh, make it personal. Uh, customize the email so that it feels like you're talking directly to that person and not a general audience. Um, that's going to help resonate with people. Uh, keeping them updated. When people make a gift to you, make sure you keep them updated. Um, and then, of course, thanking your donors. But continuing to make them the ask, add that sense of urgency. The day is only so long, starting at 8 a.m. through midnight of that night. Um, so letting them know when to give, are there certain power hours, do you have a match live, 
keeping them updated on the best time to give is really helpful. Um, make it really easy for them to donate. When they click that email or when they look at that social post, add that direct button to your donation form um, so that all they do is click that button, make their gift, and then that's it. Make it easy for them. Um, you can also get creative. You don't want to, you know, write something that's so long that people get distracted and move on because we all know how quickly we scroll through social feeds. Uh, but use this as an opportunity to get creative, add pictures, uh, add testimonial videos. If you use Instagram, you know, you can record videos in the next two weeks that you can then post. Um, maybe you want to record uh, why you should give to this organization, have each of your board members submit a you know, 30 second video about the impact your organization has. Kind of doing that groundwork before the day is going to be really huge and help you have a more compelling ask. Um, and then don't be afraid to ask more than once. If you get a gift from a donor during early giving, don't be afraid to also send you know, a group email an email to that individual saying, hey, today's a live event and we're trying to, you know, get first place on the leaderboard. We're really close. Can you uh, give again? Um, or even during the giving day, if someone gives in the morning or gives during the power hour, you can also still entice them and say, hey, there's, you know, four hours left of the event. There's X number of golden tickets left. Uh, this is another opportunity to help us get more money uh, by winning a prize. Um, and then moving into resources and support, and then we'll get through as many questions as we can. Um, just a reminder, the nonprofit toolkit is going to be a huge resource, helpful, filled with lots of guides, your toolkit, your social um, kind of templated uh, images that you can use. Um, we have a lot of step-by-step -step Mighty Cause support articles to help you build your campaign, to help you set up uh, matching gifts. If you need to learn more about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we have guides in there as well. Um, and Tamir dropped in that link for the next um, uh, webinar, which you said was Monday. I think I forgot to add the date. Um, and then you can review any previous trainings on demand. So if you need a more getting started type of video, you can look at our last recording, which is I think a couple weeks ago we posted that one um, inside the training webinars tab. Uh, and then, of course, Mighty Cause, we are here to help you if you have questions, if you need help, if your donors need help, if you need a new receipt sent to them, just reach out to our support team at MightyCause.com. So support at MightyCause.com. Uh, all right, so we can tackle some questions. Let's see. Um, one of the qu questions was, do we have to use Mighty Cause Participate? For everything you just saw here today, yes. Um, Sarah, you talked about some of the integrations of um, some of the other uh, funding. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. like, talking about remember. the widget? Yep. Yep. So the widget is like an external kind of embedded uh, form that you can add to your off Give828 platform website. So if you have like a year round website where people are accustomed to going to donate, um, swap out that donate button, swap out that link on your website with your Give828 donation form or add an embedded uh, widget. That way, if people happen to go to your year round website to make a gift and they they would click that donate button which is directly linked to give 828 so essentially they're making a gift to your organization page um, through your year round website so hopefully that makes sense mm -hmm. um, that's a really great way to capture those donations where people might just forget or they see you're participating in give 828 and they want to support you so they go to your regular website mm -hmm. that's right all right, um, other questions? Sarah, there's a question for you. Does Mighty Cause offer a backdoor CRM donor base for nonprofits for a separate fee? Uh, we do have advanced features that integrate with CRMs and things like that. Reach out to our support um, team and just let them know your interest. Um, and they can kind of give you a demo and, and let you kind of look around and see if that's something that you want. Um, what does this work with Wix? Okay. Um, no, 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 no. She's not suggesting that you use the widget. You have to create a Mighty Cause profile or page for Give 828 and you use that URL on your year-round website. So on youngblackandgivingback.org, we would sub our Mighty Cause link for our 
you know, whatever other website we might use. Um, so we're not suggesting that you um, not, you have to create a Mighty Cause page because that's where your funds are gonna go through. That's where people are gonna land on the day of to support you. That's where your, um, that's where your organization will be able to populate in the leaderboard, et cetera. So you have to have a Mighty Cause profile or page in order to uh, participate um, in, in the day from what we've explained um, on this webinar today. Um, no, Harriet, the webinar next week is about donor retention. So we'll be talking about how to move your donors um, from or the donors that you gain on Give828 and how to keep them year round uh, and beyond. This one is being recorded, so you can always uh, run it back and catch anything that you may have missed. Uh, let's see what else we have. Hey. You have back-to-back -back fundraising in August and September. Um, if, if it's a different type of fundraiser that you're doing in September, um, I. I absolutely encourage you to be able to do both. I know people talk about donor um, burnout, um, but this day you you may experience that you gain a lot new a lot more donors or new donors, um, whereas in September you may tap into your existing donor base. So I'm not sure what the September fundraiser is, um, but you should absolutely um, bank on Give 828 as an opportunity for you to gain to gain new donors, um, and as just an exercise for fundraising. I'll say you also will have some more, you know, donor success if you are specific about your fundraising needs. So maybe Give A28 is general fundraising. Uh, maybe your September fundraiser is like specifically towards a project that you have. Um, so figuring out, you know, your pitch for each of them is also going to be really helpful. Donor is usually more than happy to give to two different campaigns, especially if they know uh, what you're fundraising for. So if you're, you know, if you need specific, uh, you know, dollars towards being able to help a certain amount of mothers, uh, and then you want to do, you know, additions to your building or support children, that also helps. Mm -hmm. Um, Arnold, I would encourage you to take a look at um, Mighty Cause and their frequently asked questions. Um, there was a webinar, you can rewatch this one. And there's also a webinar that we did a couple of weeks ago that I think we'll be able to answer some of your questions. Um, if you're already registered for the day, if your organization is already registered, some of these answers to your questions are included in the emails that you will receive directly from Mighty Cause. Um, and yes, you can keep your web, um, your Mighty Cause page after Give 828. In fact, a number of the organizations that participate in the day um, keep their pages open and live. Um, the only thing that changes is that when folks donate, it just goes to your, you know, general, you know, fundraising efforts versus um, the numbers being populated or going towards the giving day itself. But everything else still works the same. Your payout still works the same. Um, your 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 page your your URL stays the same. It's all the same. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, I don't see any more questions on my end. Um, Sarah. Um, I'm not seeing too many either. Um, if you continue, what's this one we just came through? Awesome. Well, hopefully you all did find this helpful in some way or, you know, thinking about different goals or different tools that you've heard about. Um, Arnold, uh, the widget matching grants, peer to peer fundraising, custom will check about form. Those are all completely different. Um, they're just different tools available to you to try to help support your campaign. Um, so if you have, this might be a good one also to reach out to support about because they can help guide you through how you could use each one of these. Um, and I think that's everything. So thank you everyone again for taking time out of your day to join us for our second webinar. Um, we hope to see you at the third one on Monday. Alrighty, bye everyone.